guys, welcome to another edition of S&D Podcast. Uh, Dan here with Steve. Welcome to another sh- fun pack show. What's up, guys? How's it going this week, Steve? A lot of we got a lot of fun stuff going on this week. Uh, we're of course going to be uh, doing maintenance with the NBA local NBA week. How the Knicks and Nets fared this week so far. Um, we're going to have the Islander, Ranger, and Devil talk also. A lot of uh, very ugly weeks so far between the Islanders and Rangers, both stinking up the joint right now. The Islanders don't like the home cooking. No, uh, seven-game homestand, and they're already down two. Two games, that is. Um, also, we're going to have a great show tonight. We're also, me and Steve are going to have... Uh, our Giants review and preview for this year, upcoming see oh, what happened this year and what ha- is going to happen upcoming what we want year. To happen. What we want to happen. A lot of thanks to everybody that wrote on our Facebooks and Twitters on the concerns of what they think the Giants should do in the off season, and uh, everybody else that's been listening. Also, thank you to Division One Point One, as this week's song was through it all. Um, Continue to follow them. They're they're about to blow up. They're they're a great band, like we've been saying and promoting every week. So kudos to them. Yes. Also, don't forget uh, we are now on iTunes. So please look for us on there. Subscribe to us on there. Um, we do have. Um, we're going to slowly start uh, taking out of the YouTube portion, and we will. Eventually, just go solely on iTunes. Yeah, with iTunes, I mean not iTunes. Uh, with YouTube, we're starting to like gonna start drifting away from it, but we're still gonna keep our account and do fun stuff. Uh, if we go to games and stuff, we'll take videos of us or whatever. We'll figure that out as it as it goes on. But we're still gonna keep the YouTube uh, account, obviously, because it's never it's never a bad idea to keep. So also uh, follow us on Instagram. At SND underscore podcast, as well on Twitter with that. Um, also like us on Facebook. Um, share us with your friends. Um, like Dan said before, the Vision 1.1, through it all, is what you're hearing tonight by them. Uh, check them out on iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby, all over the place. Any place you can find music, I'm sure you can find the Vision 1.1. And also don't forget to uh, check out this week's uh, articles on uh Schmuck Sports, how can we forget about them? Of course, of Schmuck course. Sports. Keith had a nice article about N1 this week, I saw, um, about the impact on today's game that, that, that yeah. all the N1 mixtapes used to have. Yeah, essentially. That was a very good article. Um, just Please keep following us all over the place. Keep liking us. Keep sharing us. Keep supporting us. Um, maybe in the future we'll have some uh, contests. Well, I know we got a couple... Of T-shirts a friend of ours made um, for us with the logo. So maybe we'll start doing a couple contests for you guys uh, on like Twitter or Facebook to see if you guys can answer some of my questions or something to win a T-shirt. Um, so like Dan said, we have a fun-filled pack show tonight. Hope everybody enjoys it. Uh, we also will talk about later on in the show uh, after we talk about the NBA and the NHL and, and all that stuff. Um, We'll talk about the future of the podcast and some ideas that we have to share with you guys, some I- some plans we have. So enjoy the show tonight, guys, and let's get started. Welcome back, guys, to the S&D Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. You guys just heard Through It All by Division 1.1. Uh, Dan is here. I'm Steven. We're going to talk some basketball. All right, local basketball. We're going to uh, start with the Nets. We're going to start with the Nets. All right, let's see with the Nets. They, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. They had, a they had an up and down week. Um I know they had that game where uh, they played the Bucks coming off, I believe it was, where uh, Joe Johnson went. Yeah, he, he had, had two buzzer. Yeah, he had two buzzer beaters. Turned it to overtime and the three to three to then um, 
steal the win. Well, they beat the they had a home and home against Milwaukee, and I swept that. Then Houston came to town last Friday and took care of business. Um, they beat the Nets 106-96. They beat them by 10. Then they uh, played the Grizzlies. It's like like we've been saying, the Nets are a very hot and cold team, very streaky team. As I, I as I'm looking at their uh, schedule right now. They've won how many? One, two, three, four. They won. They go on four. winning streaks and then they go. And then on they losing lost streaks. two, and then they beat they beat uh, New Orleans last night. Oh no, two nights ago. Two nights ago, I apologize. One hundred one to ninety seven. That was that was also a good game. They 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 they're just a very hot and cold team, like pretty much all the other teams in the NBA right. are. It, it, so they're not consistent like the elite teams, like. Miami. When Miami wants to win, they'll go on mm-hmm. thirty game winning streak. The Nets are not that type of team. Unfortunately a lot of the fans expect that from them because of the move to Brooklyn yeah, which But they're still building as a a solid team. Um it's it's a very it's a very impressive season for the first season in Brooklyn from the standpoint that they've been a lottery pick the last few years. Yes. And not even making the playoffs to them being a playoff team. So Kudos to the Nets. Um, let's see. Hold I'm on. I'm very shocked they didn't make any moves or in the. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of shocked, but not th- honestly, there wasn't really that many moves for them to. Uh, There's nothing good out there. Yeah. Um, they don't really have the pieces to package. It's not like they have the young talent to send places like teams like Atlanta is looking for 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 uh, Josh Smith. They want young guys. They don't want veteran guys that are only going to be there for the year and then they're gone and they got to start over. Believe it or not, believe it or not, the, they have the same they have the same amount of wins as the Knicks right now, but the Knicks have a two game lead on the a uh, four game lead on the win loss column. So, that's NBA care about head to head or no? Sending wise. No, but it's just a quick fact for a lot of Knicks fans including us um didn't real we like we knew the Nets were good this year, but not as good as we thought. Yeah, they they have the same amount of wins as the Knicks right now. That's got me scratching my head. Good job for them so far. Like I said, the Knicks haven't been playing so well late, as of late, but the Knicks are finally waking up, kind of, sorta. They've won the last two games. Um, last night's game. I'm sorry, we're recording on a Thursday. On the 27th, the on game the on the 27th. Yeah, against the uh, Golden State Warriors, they were lucky to pull that win out. You mean the Stephen Curry show? Yeah, it wasn't that was even a, a basketball game. It was Stephen very, Curry's. That was a game. very impressive game by Stephon Curry. Um, Fifty-four points you and eleven last, threes. You know, I, you know, the last time a player came in to the Garden and scored fifty plus points was when Kobe and LeBron did it. Two, a couple yeah. years ago in yeah. 09, Kobe, yeah. Kobe had the 61. That was impressive. So now the question is, what does LeBron do on Friday, the first, when he comes to the Garden again? Because he's going to have to. Because you know he's. Yeah. He saw Steph Curry That's put what up 54 happened, uh, that that year. That was a fun two game span. That they played each other. That was crazy. I remember they, they were back to back. Yeah, it was back to back, and everybody was so pumped because yeah. the Knicks were playing really well. Yeah, and the Knicks got smoked both games. That was fun. Anyway, um, the Knicks defense, uh, Tyson. We have to give kudos to Tyson Chandler like every week. Twenty eight rebounds. That that he had like twelve in the first quarter, right? Yeah, that is so impressive. It's not even funny. Who, who has twenty eight? Who, who can? Uh, excuse me. Who can collect twenty eight rebounds in a single basketball game? Is very Dwight Howard. Two years ago. Yeah. But Two years ago. Yeah. That, that that takes some skill and all the double teaming and boxing out and everything like that. That's great to see. Um, I'm very glad to see that that is uh, contributing off the bench. Jared like, Smith had a nice game yesterday. It, it kind of upsets me, but it is what it is that he is the most highest paid cheerleader, unfortunately, in, during crunch time. But you can't mess up something that's gelling right now. So sooner or later, we're going to have C-Stat playing crucial minutes in the fourth quarter opposed to the second and third quarter. You and I talked about it a couple weeks ago. I brought it up about um, how he needs to average the double-double against the Heat. Yeah. If it comes down to Knicks, Heat, and the playoffs, you're going to see a lot more of set, especially late in the game. Of course. Because they're going to have Haslin and... uh, 
they're going to have lineups like Chalmers, Wade, LeBron, Haslam, Bosch. Mm-hmm. And they're going to need that extra big presence with... Because uh, the Knicks can't have a small lineup when the when the Heat put that type of lineup on the Al- court. Also, um, like we've been saying, uh, Shumpert's been getting healthier. So that's great to see. He's finally getting... Uh, couple of his speed back, which is phenomenal to see. And I noticed the other night he wasn't even wearing a knee brace. Yeah. So that tells you something on how comfort, how comfortable uh, Shumpert's feeling, and he's completely healed. It's a process thing. You can't you can't rush those. Like, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Like, like Chicago Bull fans right now are thinking, oh, Rose is going to come back and score 30 points a game and have 12 assists a game. No, he's going to play probably 10 minutes his first game, 17 minutes his second game, and he's going to have 10 points. Maybe even maybe one of those first games back, he's going to have 10 turnovers. There's no practice in sports for the real speed of a game. No, absolutely not. Absolutely so, not. And it's the same thing like in hockey. Players come back it's, and it's take time. It's just sports to get in general. It, with any major surgery, and then when it comes to a knee or concussion, it takes a while because they have to get back into the groove. The f- even flow of the games and the nuances of the game, and and also you don't you can't forget that a the team has been playing without them and they've they have already gelled without that guy, so they have to add another integral piece to the puzzle nine ten out of ten times. So the Knicks are I, I give the Knicks a lot of credit. Granted, they are the oldest team in the league because of all the pickups. That we've had for free agency this year. And Rashid's out now. Yeah, for another six weeks. I'm not really shocked about that. Unfortunately, he had a fracture this whole entire time. Um, Mets, but Mets medical staff is working. Yeah, on him, pretty so, much. So um, waited. But we picked up Kenyon Martin. Uh, pretty much the same player. Yeah. Essentially the same player, minus the not the random three pointers that he's he not going to throw up three pointers ever. So, but. That that's why we picked up Kenyon Martin because they obviously knew that she was going to be out for a while. So who knows? He might not even come back this season. I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, may I think I read something yesterday? Maybe postseason. Po- possibly, but that that's pretty standard, like every time. Um, so. it's going to be interesting the way the next play. Uh, they have a big game on March first at home against the heat. Miami. The Heat. Um. Knicks have been struggling. LeBron's been insane. I hate to say it, but I think Miami's going to pull it out tomorrow for the reason that we embarrassed them the first two games the, this year. The problem is playing Miami in the regular season is, is if, you're up, care. if you're up 10 points with six minutes left, the game's over. You basically yeah. won because they're not even going to try. Exactly. It's going to be different tomorrow with Melo and Stat and uh, both of them that's playing. A, that's another big thing. The Knicks have a full team this time. Yeah. Last time, last two times they played, uh, Melo didn't play the last game. Yeah, Melo didn't. Schumpert didn't play either of them. Stat didn't play either of them. Yeah. Knicks have a full team. Um, from what I know, Miami's got a full team. They don't have any injury problems. So it's going to be a fun game to watch. There's a lot of teams, a lot of, of the quote-unquote experts earlier in the year picked... Miami and the Knicks well, to be the East team. Well, of course, because the NBA is so predictable. It's turning into WWE wrestling and the predictability. Well, I don't know. With the way the Knicks play against the Pacers, I would never mark them out now. If the Knicks have to play the Pacers in the semifinals mm-hmm. in the second round, exactly. I, would, I wouldn't I would put my money on, on the Knicks. No, I wouldn't be. either. Um, well... It's going to be interesting to see. Knicks and Nets, of course, don't play again this season, unfortunately. Whoever created the schedule. Yeah, they they got to do a better job next year. But it's okay. Um, it's going to be still fun wire to the end because, granted, the uh, what's going to happen is a lot of st- scoreboard watching and everybody's going to be intrigued on the New York area of, oh, who's running New York? So... The Knicks are going to take it, hopefully. You know what? You want to you want to turn this into a rivalry like a lot of the fans do? Hopefully we play playoffs. each other in the playoffs. Playoffs. Yeah. You're going to see... I promise you, you will see one of the most intense playoff series you'll ever watch if they play each other in the playoffs. Yeah, that would be fun. And I'm going to call it right now. If they do, it goes seven games. Yeah, probably. Six, seven games. Of, and it's going to be like Knicks-Pacers shoving. 
type yeah, game we'll back in the day. Or Heat, yeah. Or we'll Heat, see. We'll back see. from like the 90s. Okay. Um, well, that's our basketball for the week. Hope you Go all Knicks, enjoyed it. Beat the Heat. Beat the Heat. That's a huge matchup. We got we to gotta keep rolling. Let's go. Let's go next. S&D Podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by the National Basketball Association or any of its affiliates. Welcome back to the S&D Podcast Show on the Schmuck Sports Network. Steven here with Dan, and we're going to talk some hockey. Um, we're going to start off with the Devils like we do, normally do every week. Uh, same old, same old, same old Devils. The only difference now is Hedenberg's in goal and Berdor's on the IR for a little bit. Yeah, for a couple of weeks is back. back He's an old man. Him, old man. Old fat, so is uh, a little hurt. But... That's what happens when you turn 40. It's okay. Uh, Hemberg is going to hold the fort down, per se. And we get to see how good the Devils' defense actually is without Brodor saving them every night. It's going to be fun to watch them, um, see how they can perform, see if the offense steps up to to deal with everything. Um, I doubt it, but it'll be interesting to see. Um... As for the Rangers, they're the Rangers. Yeah, they've been slumping still. Um, had some key injuries, but it is what it is with injuries. Uh, uh, but they they got hit hit pretty hard though last last week. They had, like one at one game they lost like three or four guys at one point, a couple concussions and Nash with the concussion. So once they all get back healthy, they'll be going full Ra- speed. Ranger fans just need to relax because once the playoffs come around and everybody's healthy, they're going to be a solid team. Um, and it's just about being healthy at the end of the year. Um, you learned that a couple of years ago with the NBA in the lockout season. Mm-hmm. It's all about being healthy in the playoffs. But it, but it, the re- <coughs> excuse me, the reason the Rangers are uh, Ranger fans are, are like nervous is because. They finally had expectation this year, and they've had that for the past couple of years. But so no, but problem. this year it is. Let's do it now. We got to do it now because we lost in Game Six to the Devils in the playoffs. Right. They were basically a Henrik goal away from possibly going to the finals. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, well, at least forcing a Game Seven. Exactly. Um. As for the Islanders, uh, a miracle has happened. They can't win a game at home. They can't win a game at home. That I don't even want to talk about. But the miracle has finally happened, and Rick DiPietro is no longer up here with the team. Um, Hallelujah. They finally put him through waivers. Shockingly enough, nobody picked him up. Oh, gee, what a shock. I guess nobody wants to pay a guy for the next 18 years or whatever it is that's left. on 27 years left on his contract. The reports is the Islanders just signed his uh, their first child to a uh, lifetime contract with the Islanders. So congratulations to Rick DiPietro's family. Set for life. Set for life. It's anyway. also in there that when they change owners. Yes, of course. He he still has to stay. Yeah, he he is Bobby Bonilla for the for the Islanders. Um, but really, it's a good idea by them. They sent him down to the minor league affiliate in Bridgeport. And uh, basically, the idea is to get him to play because he's not really playing up in the in uh, the pros. Um, they're hoping that he finds his game, basically, by going into the minors. Um, honestly, as a fan, um, at this point, I just feel bad for him. I really hope he finds his game and can become a decent goaltender again. Uh, I'm not looking for the Rick DiPietro of old that played 60 games a year and won 40 games a couple of years in a row. I mean, just just a solid 15-game guy who doesn't give up these ugly goals and make bad mistakes. He just has to find his game. It's been a long time since he's really been healthy. Um, it is the first year that he's actually healthy. Um, so it'll be fun to watch. I I have two tales of the tape for this story. Um... 
as most of you have probably known, today he said he considered committing suicide because of the booing and all the injuries the last few years. Then he took it back saying it was a joke. When I first heard this story, I, I come to the realization that sports is, is important, but it shouldn't be the point where you want to kill yourself. Then to fi- And I really was rooting for the guy. To find out he was joking about some something so serious as suicide, be- suicide like that, it really is depressing to hear about. It he really needs to get fixed mentally. I mean, maybe he got a couple of pucks to the head too many times, so, but he needs to get fixed mentally, opposed to he just needs to get fixed 100. percent I really it really is sad to see uh, how how far he has declined mentally and physically. He he needs to go down there and I bet I feel like that if he plays um a couple games he will um after playing a couple weeks and feeling good about himself playing, he's gonna then go on and hopefully be back to the old Rick DiPietro who a lot of people were always were very high of and always said was a fun guy, was great in the locker room type player. Um, so hopefully he goes down there and gets to play a lot. As part with the young guys, hopefully he'll make him feel young again, and he'll just play well. Thing That's is, the he's idea. Still, he's still quote unquote young. Granted, he's only thirty years old, and that's what's sad. So, Ricky, get better and mentally and physically, and prove us wrong and come back to the Islanders eventually. Um. I think he's going to end up being a solid backup goalie for the next couple of years. Because mm-hmm. a lot of reports are pointing out there's no reason to buy him out yeah. or amnesty him because the idea is you're going to have to pay him no matter what for all those years. And by amnestying him, basically you're paying him for all the years. Or if you buy him out, you're doubling his amount of years and lowering his cap number. The Islanders are a team that struggle to get to the cap floor every year. So by leaving him on the cap, and burying him in the minors, I mean, that doesn't hurt. It can't hurt to do that. Um, as for the home cooking problem, I think it's time to start wearing the white jerseys at home. Huh? Just so maybe, um, it was like that, it was like um, the year, the first Eli Super Bowl year, Giants couldn't win a game at home. Yeah, but... The and I thought in that last game when they were playing the Patriots, I wanted them to wear the white jerseys. Yeah. Because they couldn't lose on the road. Yeah. It's just like that with the Islanders right now. They can't lose. They haven't really. They've played a lot better on the road um, in, like, packed arenas, which is amazing. Yeah. They they don't really show much effort and heart, per se. We went to the game on Sunday when they lost to the uh, Hurricane. The first two periods, they played great. And the third period, they just clankered. Then Tuesday night against the, pro- the, the problem Sunday, Capuano came out and said it after the game. He felt in the locker room there was no emotion. That's that's the problem. And he's the guy who's supposed to cause the make the emotion, but they don't. But no, he can't. they're NHL players. They should make the emotion by themselves. They they've made it that far into the NHL, made it that far in their hockey progress. Two pumped them each other up. The coach is not responsible. Shouldn't be responsible. Every every little nick and cranny. The others are professionals. They should take it on their own accountability. And I agree. And that's but that's just a cop out because the coach is upset and uh, he doesn't want to take the heat. He doesn't want his team to take the heat. But on the other hand, yes, they have to do it. But it's also the coach who has to help as well. It's not just. The player. Oh, of course. Coach still but, has to but, get but them. There's motiv- a point. There's a point where there's absolutely a point between getting people pl- amped up all the time. It's it's unexcusable. Sometimes to the players got to be. Fair, be also, a lot of the players even have hinted at it that Capuano doesn't really do anything in the locker room. So he's not a coach that should be coaching. He has no fire. Um, you see it when there's bad calls on the ice. He's never, like, jumping up and down. And he's never getting, like, angry. You see guys like Doug Wade and Brent Thompson. They're getting angry. 
Capuano just stands there, folds his arms, and goes, okay, next play. Well, that's, that's He needs good. to show a fire. That's so overrated, though. It it really is so overrated because you don't need the whole coaching staff to be fire and brimstone. You need some cooling, cooling side to the story. I'm not saying Capuano is the greatest coach ever. Obviously not saying that. But it's it's just the players have to show up. The the coaches aren't paid to play. They they they're supposed to break down um you're absolutely right with uh game changes. He, the, he had a rough game. He called the timeout early and after that timeout the Islanders that game completely changed instead of going the other way around. Right. And the Islanders had that feel of two goals. Let's just forget about yeah, it. And typical typical Let's whatever we did enough tonight. Yawn. Yeah, it it's just they you could tell the la, la, lazadaisical effort at home because they're home, they're able to sleep in their own bed, they're they're comfortable. Opposed when they're on the road, they're a little bit more on edge and everything else like that. So you got your fire right there. So anyway, they got home. The when they just gotta pretend that they're on the road. I think that se. they need to start staying at the Marriott. No, I haven't. I'd Don't go to their own homes. Go stay stay together. Everyone gets a roommate. Huh? Like the road. I'm sure half the team does because they're under the age of uh, 25. So they have tonight's the 28th. They have three games before the Rangers. Including tonight, before the Ranger game. Basically, it'll either be Capuano coaches the Ranger game, and it'll be his final game, or Capuano will have a new ho- head coach for the Ranger game. You think if they don't win a game, if they don't win another home game between before the Ranger game, possibly. they don't win a game. I don't see Capuano making the Ranger game, even though I keep hearing a lot of things that shortened season. Capu- they're just going to leave Capuano yeah, for the I season. C- I could see that. For the sh- that fact, um, but I don't think that's an excuse. Jordan season or not, there's no excuse. No. I mean, when the NBA had the lockout, the Heat didn't play well right away. Yeah. Were you gonna fire uh, what's his name? No, you're not gonna fire him. You're gonna give him a chance. But there's difference between the Islanders and the Miami Heat, though. Okay, granted, they have like seven thousand superstars. The the and they also another thing. If Javaris doesn't score. Any sort of point, the Islanders don't win. The Islanders got to get more scoring, which is an obvious critique. Um, time to let go of Kyle Posso. I'm done with him. He's the other night, Tuesday night. I was at the game. All he did was fall. He's been doing a lot. He did that Sunday night too. All he does is fall. He doesn't win. He doesn't do anything. He just falls. He's kind of like a big waste of space. Um, also, I would love to see Matt Martin step up and start punching people. Yeah, it's not happening. He needs to be a fighter. He knows what he's supposed to do and throw his body around. He's, but he's he not needs, a fighter, though. But there again, he is a fighter. And he's shown he's it in the past. He's a full-out fighter, though. though but he's, he's gonna... the guy on the ice who needs to go out there and drop the gloves. And Sometimes in ho- it's amazing. In hockey, a guy drops the gloves, totally different team. But honestly, but he's not a... All right, he'll get into a couple of scrums, of course, but he's not a full-out fighter, you know. He he he's. I'm not asking active. him to be a full-out fighter. I'm telling him just one game, just go out there and drop the gloves. He, he you'll get it eventually. It, he doesn't get enough playing minutes to get. He there. actually gets plenty of playing. He does. He plays like 17 minutes a game. Huh. It's the quietest 17 minutes ever, because other than a few checks here and there. My point exactly. He barely does anything on the ice. He's got to step it up. And I think he's got the potential to be a really good player on this team. But he doesn't want to do it. So, well, that's hockey. I don't want to talk about this team anymore. Yeah, they suck. (laughs) That was hockey for the night, everybody. We'll be right back with the... Giants. Finally. S&D Podcast is no way affiliated with, associated with, produced, or endorsed by the National Hockey League or any of its affiliates. Alright, 
welcome back to the S and D podcast, sponsored by uh, Schmuck Sports Radio. Uh, Stan here with Steve. Now we're gonna do our part two of the local football preview slash review of uh, this year of our New York area teams. Uh, this week we're gonna be talking about our beloved New York Football Giants. We have a lot of views, kind of similar to what majority. We pretty much have the same views as the majority of the New York Giant fan base has. Um, we had a disappointing year. Um, it was nine and seven. We we reached above five hundred, but there was a lot of left on the table for Giant fans and the Giant players. It was themselves. an upsetting season. That's it how I see been, it. It could have been a lot better, and it could have been definitely been a lot worse. Thank God we have talented players that it didn't make it worse. Um, yeah. It was a, the toughest schedule in the league going into the season. Yes. Um, next year they actually have one of the easier schedules in the league, well, surprisingly enough, as of right now, of course. Of course, right now. Um, but honestly, though, the Giants held their own. There was a bunch of games. There was a bunch of games that they should have taken care of business, but typical Giant fashion, they didn't. And there was a lot of games that, oh, wow, we beat them that badly. Like the Packer game. Oh, yeah, the Packer game. That was the shocking. Saints. The Saints game. Well, eh, the Saints can't, didn't really play good on the road all year. Um, what, what the other game? The Niners game in there, uh, San Fran, we took care of them. And there were also games that they played that they should have won. One. That they lost. The Redskin the game in Washington. That that game. They got killed by penalties in that game. Yes, that game. The uh, Atlanta game they didn't even show up for. Atlanta Baltimore game. they didn't show up for. Um, no, there there was this one. What was the, the home word? opener? The home opener, of course. There was one road game. The Eagle game. At the road, the first week. The, the first Sunday night game of the year. When we lost to Philly. Oh, that's right. Well, we should have beat them. We should have beaten them, and we had a shot to beat them, and, and you, it was a pass interference at the end of the game. Right. Ramsey's barred in with the pass interference. So, well, Giants, there isn't really much blame to go around. It was more of... They didn't finish. A post, it was a lot different year. We didn't have the breaks or lucks that we had the, the previous year when we went to the Super Bowl. I but, felt, but that's expected. I felt a lot of uh, the players had that mentality yeah, of well, even if we're it. losing in the fourth quarter, we have Eli, yeah, we're yeah. going to win. It, that it happened too much. Way too much pressure on Eli this year. He had a down year as well. Um, but he did, but he didn't. He, he Yeah, right. I mean, the production in the fourth quarter. But I, you can't expect that every year. What happened to you? Well, it's going to be two years. That happens once in a lifetime kind of stuff. That every week he came back and drove the Giants oh, to a win. You don't or see that. That that's not going to happen next year. And Coughlin, I'm sure Coughlin and everybody is drilling that home. It's been the last three years. It's just how the division is. It's winner get a winner go home to win the division. And our division, arguably. Because there's a lot of arguments. Because the NFC West this year is going to be beastly. Oh yeah, the NFC West is not going to be a fun division to play in. I think I think I think they, I heard something. Uh, San Francisco, Seattle, and and, and uh, Rams don't and the Ram- sleep on the Rams. Don't. And they all I think combined they have about 40 draft picks. Yep, and the Rams had the best record versus the division teams. Yeah. Um... And then, on top of that, back to the Giants. Um, the one team you can argue is the Cardinals of the division right now is the Eagles because the Redskins are so, finally turning that to, corner. To be, no, time out. Time out. To be fair is the next year the two there's two wild card teams. All actually let's be fair, I'm gonna be fair. All four teams are wild cards next year. You're right. Because you don't know who the Cowboys are bringing back right now. A lot of rumors of guys being cut, guys taking pay cuts who don't want in, who aren't going to want to play for them, so they want to get cut. Uh, a big rumor recently has been Miles Austin. Might That'd be, be a big cut. change. That, but they want to pay does and all that other stuff. Anyway, 
with the Redskins is they finally got pieces going, but with RG3, who knows how long he's going to be out for because there's no way he's starting the season. Well, you heard the slogan, all in for for one. Yeah. That's a, that's the He has a commercial out on everything, all in for one, because he's planning to be there. Um, during the combine last weekend, actually, they asked James Andrew if he's – kind of acting like Adrian Peterson did last year. Well, of course and, he is, of course. But and, but the key was that Andrew said that he's actually doing better than Peterson was doing. Which is good. And scary. Yeah, but honestly, everybody's different. Everybody's right. different, and the it's Redskins also, are going to be a little bit more cautious because he is only 22, 23 years old, and they put the bank on him on a franchise opposed to a franchise running back they can always find a brand new running back, like like it's out of going out of style. I mean, Alfred Morris, you got in the sixth round last year. Ex- exactly. You There's a little in bit the roughs. different. The Redskins have to cross every dot every I and cross every T, make sure he's okay and be able to play, not worry about week one. Um, and then when the other team in the division, well, the, the Eagles and the Cowboys, you never know. They're always going to be there, but they can't get over the hump. It's just, You're right. it's just waiting to happen. I think it's a make or break year for Tony Romo. Oh, of course. I think well, this past That's year was the billionth time. Right. I think it's time that Jerry Jones is going to have to swallow his pride and say, okay, fine, I need a quarterback. I honestly think that they're going to look to take one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the draft this year there isn't, late. There isn't really that one quarterback. There isn't that one, oh. Right, right, right. There isn't, but they're going to think along the lines of, honestly, hey, Seattle they, took Russell Wilson in the third They don't know round. what they're thinking because they they got Tony on, undrafted. Exactly. So they're going to look to try and pick up another quarterback out of nowhere and hope that if Romo doesn't play well, this guy will come in. He'll work hard. Um, I mean, they're supposed to be most of the quarterbacks. They say won't go before the third round, unless you're Geno Smith or Barkley. Yeah. Basically, unless you have a, an amazing pro day. But honestly, um, I I think that the Cowboys will end up drafting quarterback or picking one up off a free agent. Honestly, if I'm a Cowboy fan, I'm begging Jerry Jones to pay Matt more. Because just as a backup at this point, because at least he can come in and he's shown that he can be a decent quarterback if Romo struggles. But the key is that Romo didn't struggle last year. No, Romo had a Romo is very good. It's just the he, rest of the team. His, I think it was his best career number numbers. Well. My my thing with the Dallas Cowboys is is the following. It looks like they're never prepared, and Tony Romo has to t- every every waking moment. Of each huddle and each snap, Tony has to tell one of their rec- one of his receivers to go X, Y, and Z, and you and they show him telling oh, yeah. you should go deeper. All the time. And and it's amazing. Like I really legitly feel bad for Tony. I I like Tony. It it's it's not fully his fault, and he doesn't get the credit that he should get. Um, I agree. He needs to get because he has that ceiling where he he is so inconsistent. Like for example, that Giant game on the road when the Giants beat he threw five picks. Oh, and should have won. And should and should have won with the fingertips. Lost by the tip of Dez's finger. Yeah, that just shows you how inconsistent they are. And a couple of those picks weren't his fault. But, of course, a few of them were. And that's just how inconsistent Tony is. But that's is. the thing in the NFL. There are picks. Everybody is. That's, oh, it's oh, one yeah. of the things. If I Honestly, they should make a uh, a new stat type thing. Like They've, intercept deflections. Yeah. The interceptions off deflections and not count those but towards that's quarterbacks. But like the year the Eli had 30. led the lead in picks. Half the time was off a receiver. Right. And but, Eli pushing it. And the same with Sanchez this year and... Yada yada yada. Everybody knows what the situation is. It anyway. Uh, the 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 Cowboys. One of these years are gonna step up and make the playoffs. When is it gonna it's, be? It's not about making the playoffs. It's about winning in the playoffs for them. Well, of course, but because, they gotta make it first. They haven't because, made the playoffs in a few years. And also think about this. They also only have one playoff win since their last Super Bowl win. Ninety six. Right. So that's a problem as well. Um. But 
We're off topic. We're here to talk Giants. So we're talking to NFC East, which was related. But here is where the Giants fall. With Eli and the, the still with the young core of players, their offense is very solid and young. The only blaring question mark of the offense is, is Andre Brown going to be back and healthy? Well, you get that Andre Brown that's not... Who's an... One looking to make a yeah, he was looking to make a name for himself, Andre Brown, who played in the early part of the season. But Andre Brown got four yards per carry, thanks to with um, Hernaski. He was just a solid running back. The question is, we're gonna miss him, but unfortunately, he had to go. Is Ahmad Bradshaw? He was making too much money. He was making too much money, and he no, had another foot injury. It's like his tenth. I'm I'm probably I'm exaggerating. But I'm I'm cutting it close. It's he hasn't gotten an off season since being drafted without a foot surgery. That's how I think. I think and his rookie he's year. lost and he's lost every ounce of speed. He's a tough son of a bitch, and that's I thank thank you Ahmad for everything you've done. But honestly, I want to see what uh, David Wilson does this year. There was, there was I forgot he, who the beat writer was though. By the way, talking about Bradshaw. Who said it was the first time? Who's actually been a beat writer for yeah. every moment in Tom Coughlin's career? Yeah. He said that for the first time, Tom Coughlin actually showed emotion, releasing a player yeah. and Bradshaw. Well, of course, it's it's just we Bradshaw was a very unsung hero. He came from the seventh round. At a Marshall. At a Marshall, a, no, a school he, that nobody he watches. So much, but and he he he's everything in definition what a giant player should be. Right. He is a true warrior. We're going to miss him. On and off the field. On and off the field. He was a leader off the field, and you knew it. Absolutely. There were times a couple years ago where he missed games, and you could see it on the team that they didn't play well because... That's going to be a key. But next year's... Who's going to step up and take his role? Next year's key is going to be a key mix. Can he stay healthy? He had a rough year. He, He rushed himself back from foot surgery too soon this year. That led to his knee problem, and he just was never right. Well, he's had the knee problem is, since he's been drafted. The rookie yeah. year, he got the knee problem. Yeah. But uh, knowing Akeem, hopefully next year is going to be a great year. Next year is a contract year, if I yes. remember correctly, as yes. well. Next year is a contract year. But I think it's a restricted free agent. Prob- possibly, because they're still under the rookie contracts. Right. Before the CBA. But... With the receiving core is going to be just as good as as it has ever been. Hopefully, we signing Victor Cruz to a contract he's well deserved. Um, and but I'm also excited to see Cap- what Randall. Ruben, yeah, i like I said, I've liked Ruben Randall from the get go, and he I, he could be a better version of Mario Manningham. He has his head straight, and he could actually become a starting wideout in the NFL. If something comes to ride that either Knicks or Cruz contracts don't go the way it should. Grand, they probably both will be signed with no problem. Okay. Ruben can step up. Now, thinking of that, speaking of the wideout core, two names that are free agents from the team. Wide receiver core, okay. Well, I want to know if you want to bring back Barden. He's going to be... He said today that he wants a change. He, he wants a change. He un- thinks that for career-wise, he needs a change. Understandable. And you know what? There are players that he, I feel he, like that he can go to a team and that can give him more playing time the, than the Giants. The, yeah, they but basically he's a have good the slot one guy. Yeah, he, right. He he could be a good slot slot guy. But, but, but Randall was a second round second third, round third there? round pick. third round pick. So I think that he just knows that Randall's the future of the the slide on this team. Oh, Rand- Oh, Ruben Randall. I'm sorry. Uh, second round. Se- right, second round. There, I he just you thinks. Bar- Barton. I apologize. But thing with Barton, I I respect Barton, and the he played good when we needed him early in the season. Oh, the Carolina game. But to be fair with him, they they gave him so much room, and he took what the defense gave him. Right. Like. 
When he, you play against the Giants, you didn't look for Ruben. He wasn't your number one guy. Barton um, yeah. wasn't the first guy you go after. When and you're, that week, you're not double teaming. Yeah, Grandma's well, and then that's why Cruz. Even though Cruz had a more of a quieter year, but he had a great stat year. He made the Pro Bowl. Victor Cruz was the unsung hero of this team uh, this year, other than obviously Eli. Right. Because granted, he's dropped. He dropped a lot of balls this year. But Victor got double teamed almost. He got double teamed every game this year, and he still made dozens of plays. And and he, I'm shocked. I'm I I'm sure they they're not gonna say it, but I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, Cruz had a couple, like one or two concussions at least. So. Oh, I can see it. Oh, some of the kits he took this year, and thank God he. A lot of people were complaining that he he should be laying out. Couple of hits. If if he didn't turtle up, he would have been dead. Oh, no question about it. Dead. And people are like he can't be doing that. But yeah, he can be doing that because he needs a contract and he needs to support his family and fa- baby. He could have died. He could legit died a couple of those hits. He he. Thank God he lightened up on. I agree. All right. Off the other the other. Wait, there's another receiver. Okay. Hickson. Hickson is gonna become. He's gonna come back on a short contract because he. Is he or is he, he's gonna go out looking for money. I can see it. I, he doesn't. He. He doesn't deserve it, but he's gonna go looking for money because a couple of years ago he showed that he could be a kick returner. Yeah, that's true. And teams were always looking for kick returners. Plus, he's a solid third and fourth receiver. Oh yeah, he's very solid. Um, he's up in the air. Um. It's it's just one of those things. Their offense, the their pro, the main issue that I want fixed in the offense is offensive line. Is the offensive line? They their main core has gotten a little bit older. It's time to get uh, it's time to get younger on the offensive then line. they they and you and you can tell that the Giants are doing that by resigning Beatty to yes, a contract. Yes, nice little contract he got. Nice co- contract. He's he's solid player. He got hurt a, few, a bit. Um, that means Booth is on likelihood going to be be going elsewhere, unfortunately. But I, well, Booth was inside. No, but Booth was that utility guy. Right, was and he's also to, a free agent. Yeah, he. That, I don't think Booth's coming back, unfortunately. But the thing is, they got to start thinking of a future. Granted, Snee's going to be there as long as Coughlin's going to be there. And he, he is a Pro Bowl caliber lineman. If the pieces around him are good, because yes. it's, it's a complete unit. I played offensive line, and if one guy of the line is slacking, the rest of the line is going to be shaky. Right. So um. it's really if David Deal can get back healthy, he's starting to lose it because of his age, understandably. Right. But he had a rough off season. His fault, granted. And he, it, it was just a rough year for David Deal. Let's see what he can do. And uh, I, I hope we draft. We, we need to start drafting lines and get more players and everything like that. So, I, I, I if if there's a, it's going to be a very heavy O line first round this year. Oh so, yeah, the number so, one guy. All the top guys are offensive line. So, this year. let's let's get healthy on the offensive line next year and build him in and have him protect Eli and whoever the next future quarterback, hopefully not for long. Still got a couple of years. Yeah, we still have plenty of years knocking on wood, of course, but he is, Eli is 30 years Summer old. Summer of 2016, so. Eli will be a free agent. Winner of 2016, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it's a long way to go, but you never... You never know in the NFL, unfortunately. Um, offensive line-wise, free agency. Booth. Booth. Locklear. He's going to be gone, unfortunately. And that's it. Okay, unfortunately, Locklear is going to be cut. Oh, and uh, Jim Crotto. Okay. Crotto played a couple special teams. He He's probably restricted, so he'll probably come back. He's an exclusive... Rights free agent, whatever okay. that means. Okay. So they we're not really losing anybody, um, unless we cut deal because of cap casualty. 
Um, which is still either either way. It could go either way. Well, he's only got one year left, so they'll probably end up keeping him. Um, the other problem on the offense is going to be the tight end spot. Yeah. Um, because I don't see Bennett coming back. Now Bennett's definitely not coming back. It doesn't seem like it. Um, Bennett's not really knowing his role per se. He says he's not feeling the love. Um, well, he, that's because he's no, they haven't even reached out to him apparently. Yeah, on but the contract and it is. You're supposed to. You want to reach out to him. I know, but there he's way far down the food chain than Nixon. Oh Nixon yeah, Cruz. So he needs to know he could he. Got to wait a little. The bit. way the giant offense is, they don't look at tight end. But they're tight like end. they're they important. The tight end. Yeah, they they had Jake Ballard do his thing two years ago. So as long as they are, he's a little smarter. It was great having Bennett this year. A lot of games. Black he, unicorn. Black, he 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 had that great presence when he wanted to play, and caught balls. Right. His problem was. Late in the games we were losing, we'd run no huddle offenses. Yeah, he was he, the never guy hustling. Yeah. You never saw him hustle. Um, he's just one of those guys who he's solid to have. He probably would have been a bigger player right now if Whitten wasn't in Dallas. Yeah, of course. Um, but he's not He's not a guy who's going to go out there and catch 100 balls every year. Nah, and but he, he was yards. good what he was here to do. He's a great running t- uh, run blocker. I hope he they bring him back, but would I be shocked? No. Not at all. Not at all. at all. The other tight end who's also a free agent this year is Beckham. Okay. Um, I don't know what you're going to do. He ain't that. coming back. He's not exactly a... I wouldn't even consider him a tight end anymore. Basically nah. played slot receiver all the time. Yeah, essentially. Um, he had that one great play against Green Bay two, year, uh, two years ago. Yeah. On that. One play, and other than that... I haven't seen him since. Pretty much. He had a few bright spots in the Super Bowl before his knee imploded. But other than that, nothing to write home about. Um, but with the Giants' tight end, as you can see, Kevin... Uh, we had... Uh, Kevin Boss. Kevin Boss, and we had Ballard. Jake Ballard. So we don't need that prototypical tight end in Ballard. Bennett. So if we could save money and get a just as good as tight end and a quieter tight end and a no name tight end, that's what like, they're yeah. you're going to see a no name tight end brought in like the Giants do. So um, anyway, but let's talk about the bigger, the biggest question of holes is the defense. Yeah, which I personally want to see improve on the cornerbacks, not even the linebackers, because it's becoming a passing league. Yeah. And we can't stop the pass. To be to be honest with you, um, I think Prince had a great year, and this was had a really solid, underrated year. Honestly, with Prince though, it was technically really his rookie year. Oh yeah, because there was no real. Because he last year. he didn't because really ha- they didn't have the thing with those the rookies last year. They didn't have the train uh, the mini camps and the. Rookie symposiums and everything that rookies in normal draft classes get. So Prince didn't even have mini camp and all that other stuff. The first practice he comes to, his he breaks his foot. Yeah. So he actually was behind the eight ball all year last year. So this year he finally came back and he. Worked his butt off like he always does. I I I really do like Prince. He's he's gonna be a great player. I I firmly believe he's gonna be a solid corner that he the Giants are gonna have for a while. It's gonna be the interesting question though, is Corey Webster his contract. The thing with Corey is he is he is he is very good. He's very underrated for most parts. I don't know what happened last year. He just had an off year. I it. it I I don't even know. Like, it was like Corey before the Super Bowl run, the first Super Bowl run. Yeah, the one that we wanted to cut every day. Yes. Every every Sunday we left the game one and cut. That was who Corey was. I I don't know what happened last year. Well, I don't know what happened. Um, I like Jerron Hosley. Hosley, he's a nice little fire plug. Got a little bit of a hamstring issue last year. Yeah, if he he gets... 
healthy. Yeah, as long as he's healthy, he's contributor. He can contribute, and he could take it to the house at any moment. He is a playmaker. Mm-hmm. The bigger question is, who is going to be their second safety after Antro? Yeah. Are they going to resign KP, or are they going to sign Brown? You got to sign Brown. Younger guy. They're around the same age. Well, Brown will probably be back because he's a restricted free agent. Oh, Brown is a restricted free agent? Brown's restricted. Oh, okay. I'm almost positive. Yeah, Brown's a restricted free agent. Um, so he's basically back. But the thing with KP is we can definitely get KP back. Oh, he's the problem is that he already he's announced gonna, he's, he's going looking for money. Of course. Um, Which he does deserve, but he doesn't deserve. He doesn't deserve because of all his injuries he's had yeah. the past couple of years. The thing with KP is that's going to hurt because he is a pretty solid player for us. And he, he right. he's very underrated. Also, it takes away... We're, that basically takes us down to one... Or maybe even two safeties. Yeah. Because our basically the past couple of years, our best defense has been when we had we three, have three safeties. safeties. I think we could find a way to get both. Because of I think the they'll injuries. be able to figure it out. But like I said before, Corey Webster is making his cap hit this year is nine point eight. Gotcha. That needs to be cut down. Also, yeah. Antro I already heard is in a in a pay cut talk with the okay. team. So he's making nine point two against the cap this season. So basically, he's going to look to make a little less this year. Him and Corey, so they can actually bring back guys like Phillips and things like that. And I think I think they could get Cor- uh, Corey to do the same. I hope so. Uh, I, I, he's also I like only got the key with him is that he's only got one year left. Yeah. So he doesn't. So if he comes out and plays poorly, it could be the end of a career for Corey. Yeah. So he doesn't. He's not. On the, hey, let me take less money now so that, just in case, because if I end up being out. Um, so. So, with that, with that is, with the, okay, now we're, let's talk to about the linebackers. Um, Bully I, got cut. Bully got cut. Best of luck to him. Best of luck to him. He, he was what he was. He was a great. Receive. He was a good leader. He did the majority of the play calling, which uh, when B- Chase wasn't out. Um, with him, he was a good, solid. Rece- uh, he was able to cover tight ends and everything. To cover tight ends. Correct. And a few running backs, depending on the skill of the running back. Um, he he, it was time for him to go. We we have a lot of young linebackers. Yes. That. Can finally, they are solid players. They were solid players in college. That hopefully they are able to step up. They they they've gone through a Super Bowl run, right? And they could step up and lead the role. That's why it's going to be a difficult. It's going to be a time telling if Blackburn gets a contract, because it's all about Herzlick. Oh yeah. If Herzlick is healthy enough and able to play. They're going to make hers like the starting middle linebacker for the Giants next year. the key is that Blackburn doesn't have to be the middle linebacker. No. Blackburn's the type of guy who will take a $900,000 contract and yeah. play any position you tell him oh, to course. do. Of course. Because that's course. the type of player he is. And so that's Chase, what they have to I, do I with I love him. Chase. Oh, yeah. He's, he is the heart and soul of the New York Giants. He, he is what every player... He is what a New York Giant player should be. And right. That's the him and Brett how I said it. Right. Um, and you know what? All those guy, all those players who come in the league and who are drafted the, late. May I add, we're gonna move, hopefully, move back Kiwi back to the defensive ends because of OC. With OC being gone. Right. So um, honestly, I'm hoping OC doesn't find the money and comes back for cheap. That'd be nice. That no, I could see that happening. Another guy, if you want to talk defensive line, that I would love if he actually will realize that he's a third down guy and takes a low, low contract, I would love to have Dwight Freeney on this team. Yeah, but he's going to... He's yeah, going to go looking for money. Yeah, That's he the hates, problem. he's too good. Not the only other money. defensive lineman, free agent-wise, that I would actually consider getting is another guy who would want to be a, a third down only guy, yeah. Richard Seymour. Yeah, but we... But those guys, those both are going to go looking much. for money. Yeah, they're both going for money. 
Um, unfortunately, they're going to go looking for money. Um, it's safe to say Anthony Spencer will will be looking for money because also yeah, so. everybody on the defensive line are going to be looking for money. So the Giants are going to do what the Giants do and build within right. and find a good next uh, man up under the radar diamond in the rough kind of guy in the draft. Next man up, and hopefully Marcus Kuhn steps back from being health uh, injured. Halfway through the season, yeah. he started to pick up. He he is an animal, and he could be what David Tollison was. The uh, maybe even those better two Super Bowl runs. Oh yeah, he could. He definitely has a better upside than uh, what Tollison was. So, granted, he was white. That's why I did the comparison. <laughs> anyway, you know, a guy for a defensive line that you might actually get pretty cheaply is Glenn Dorsey. That would honestly be a great pickup and fill the void for uh, Chris Canty and um, have him and Linville jo- Joseph and Rocky and Rocky. They, they they can fill the void. Well, they I, are bringing I, I, in um, this weekend um, Colin Jenkins, which, former Eagle. Yeah. So this could be a good pickup. So if they could pick him up, of course. They're so. around. They're him and uh, Canty are around the same level of player. So. That'd be a good pickup if we pick him up. Um, that's really it, free agent wise. That I think the Giants would go after. Um, the, I mean, you probably get those no-name guys. So so you'll see. Where it, when it comes down to it, it really for with the Giants, it really comes down to luck. They got the talent in the right places, but they don't have. There's some missing pieces, like the rest of the league. Oh yeah, every team has missing pieces. But the Giants. It has been proven. If the Giants have Lady Luck on their side and they have have to face any sort of adversity, they are able to come together because of Tom Coughlin and his preaching and everything like that and the style of Eli and everybody coming together. Did you hear the thing with Coughlin in the in the combine? Yeah. And how he has the same seat every year. Yeah. For each day. And it's always at the 10-yard mark of the 40, because that's all he cares about is the first 10 yards. Yeah. He doesn't even keep his yeah. clock going. Yeah, first 10 yards, he's done. First burst. It's all about the burst. Because he knows players aren't going to run. No. Look, look at Wilson. You're not, not every play is going to be a 60-yard run, 70-yard no, run. Absolutely. You need that first burst to make those runs. Yeah. If you don't it, have it, that burst, all, yeah, you're not going to get those. It's all about bigger. having the turbo, right. per se. Um, let's do a little bit of a bowl prediction. Okay. First, actually, first we'll do draft position you want to improve in the draft. I would say since it's heavily, all right. Here's my two takes on the offense, uh, the draft for the first round. If someone like like what the Giants did two years ago, and someone like Prince Kyle Oliver, who's supposed to be a top ten pick originally, falls, falls to us at nineteen. If there isn't that wow. Okay, let's okay, let's just draft them because we the best player always gets drafted. Right, Terry Reese always like that, and you'll be scratching your head, but nine out of ten times it's worth it, like JPP. Anyway, I would like them to get an offensive line because they are you can never have enough offense and defensive line. Mm -hmm. That would be the way to go. Um, Stockpile on those guys. We're Get maybe get another running back just in case um, Brown doesn't pan out, which could be a likely likelihood that could happen. You never know, because he was he's still a question mark, and I love what Wilson brings to the table. So I think offense and defense line are our biggest issues, and if we can get a shit kicking linebacker. Maybe Tao, which I highly doubt is going to be last that long. But I think he will. I think we just need that that steady defensive guy, uh, linebacker just in case none of our guys pan out. But we can get that eventually. How about you? I'm looking at the offensive line, and I want to get younger. It's a very big offensive line heavy draft this year. Um, and like I said, I want to get younger. The key with the draft, though, for Giant fans is this is our opinion. Yeah. And just remember, Jerry, we trust. Yeah, absolutely. Because he hasn't 
Has honestly, how many draft picks and since he became the official GM have you actually like? At first, you question. Yeah, every, every draft you like oh, a year, a year that either that year or halfway through the next year, you're you're seeing that guy he drafted, yeah. and you're like, okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, we Giant fans have gotten really spoiled because the the two times we've made it to the Super Bowl, both rookie classes contributed so much. Oh yeah, no question about that. It was very great to see. Like, the first championship run, every player from that draft contributed. Um, okay. So My bold prediction bold for prediction. this year. Okay, it's going to be the standard Eli Manning year. Victor Cruz is going to get his. Keem is going to hopefully be healthy. Um, I'm going to steal your thunder because we have the same pathetic p- Prediction. I'm I'm sorry, but you know he is my boy. But David Wilson is going to have a breakout year, and he has a shot of being a Pro Bowler with his. You're going to say he's a Pro Bowler. Well, I'm going to take that and put in in my view. I'm going to say as right now, my vote prediction is David Wilson, a thousand yards and ten touchdowns rushing. Not not all purpose. Okay, uh, yeah, rushing ten all purpose. Thousand yards, and well, that's not asking much. He could definitely get that. This is rushing only because this is going to okay. be his year to step up as the rusher because he's going to be the number yeah. one back. So can he be that number one back? This doesn't his include question, receiving yards. This doesn't include kick qu- returns. The question with him is: Is he going to get a little bit bigger for blocking? Right. He has that. But other Brown's going to be the blocking back. You can but, see it already. But he need he needs to be able to block on certain plays because. Obviously, they're gonna know. Teams they're gonna are have not to check stupid. down. They're not gonna be. They're not stupid. Oh, obviously, it's gonna be a running play because right. what's his face is in the game, right? Or check down type of thing. So he needs to be able to protect on certain packages, and I think he's gonna be good. And Ruben Randall is gonna be. It was a good key. Granted, the Eagles did pack it in the last game of the year. He's going to be what Manningham was two years ago, and he's going to be even better. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get that. We're going to get those three receivers and a lightning rod as our running back next year. Right. Our offense is going to Eli is going to thrive so well next year. Well, I'm saying the thousand and ten not on purpose because I think that because he's going to be the number one back, they're going to look for somebody else to do the kick returning. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because and you can't have him do both. No, there's no way. Unfortunately, he was so great with the kick return, but I'd rather him do his thing running back as a running back. So, right. And everybody else agrees with me. Let's see that speed that he had on the kick returns and the. And the game. general consensus is everybody wants an offensive lineman at the moment because we're seeing people the line slowing down at age. And the line has been, majority of the line has been around for a while. The the keys have been in here for a while. Um, so that was our bold predictions. We're actually going to post them on Twitter and Facebook, so make sure you follow us and like yeah. us. Um, don't hold us to them, by the way. So if Watch that's... now in our luck, David Wilson breaks his leg and we're like, screw it. Knocking on wood, of course. <laughs> but hopefully not. David, please, please be healthy. Um, and everybody else on the Giants, please wear everybody. a bubble wrap. Please just... If you're a key member of the Giants, please just wear a bubble wrap and just... Even in the clubs. Yeah. No sweatpants with your guns in them. Okay, we had to go there. <laughs> anyway, that was our football. You're listening to the S&D Podcast uh, by Schmuck Sports. Um, Dan here, Steve here, and... Thanks for listening for the Giants. S and D podcast is in no way affiliated with, associated with, produced or endorsed by the National Football League or any of its affiliates. Welcome back to the S&D Podcast Show. Um, you just listened to Division 1.1 through it all tonight. Thank you for, once again, Division 1.1 for uh, having us play their music. Um, good luck with everything you guys are doing. 
Um, we have a lot of house cleaning to do before we uh, close shop for tonight. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the show. Yeah, first it was of all, a solid show. Um, we apologize for the very long show. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we when we started talking about giants, I'm sure we could have gone for hours, but we cut it there. Um, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on on for mm-hmm. Android people who don't have the luxury of having iTunes for yes. your for your uh, podcast. Home. You can go. I have a nice uh, site that I use for all my podcasts. Beyond Pod, I just found out. I tried before the, during the show, and we actually have our uh, podcasts up on that. Last week, I didn't. They didn't pop up yet, so we finally have them. Just there. be patient, and they'll pop up eventually, um, slowly but surely. Also, on keep sites. on liking Facebook, like always, and Twitter. And Instagram as well. Instagram. Um, just so you know, we have uh, some big shows coming up planned. We're going to have a nice... Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're actually going to do our first ever two-show week. Yeah. Uh, well, it warrants it. It's not going to be a weekly thing, but for certain things like baseball previews, like we're going to probably be doing. and um, We just have drafts. a lot of ideas for the baseball preview type thing and also the NFL draft. That we're going to split up the show. We'll do a normal... Because, yeah, we want to give it the right respect with uh, with our local teams, with the uh, NBA and NHL, that we wouldn't get to if we want to do a baseball preview, per se. Correct. And also, um, they're also going to be longer shows, so... Yeah. We also plan so. to have them... Not not longer, it'll probably be the same as a usual show, but it'll basically Thicker take up contact. the entire... Right. They'll basically contact. take up... We're going to bring in some friends of ours for both of them um also for the later on the giant jet season preview shows we'll do um but we have a lot of a lot of great things ahead uh dan and i every day are talking about new ideas for the show um lots of planning lots of things to talk about you guys heard division 1.1 check them out um we are gonna start you're gonna start hearing all their songs again we're keep every time we uh we see that they post something on their Facebook. Check them out on Facebook about a show or something. Uh, we always make sure we share it with you guys. So check them out. Uh, like Dan said, iTunes, uh, Beyond Pod, or you have a different way of finding the podcast on Android phones, please check it out. Um, YouTube, we're still using it. We're going to keep using it. we got some cool things, ideas to keep using. Um Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll take one of our shows. We'll actually record us recording it, so you guys can actually get an in-depth look of actually what goes on that it takes for us to record a weekly show. Um, that was our show for this week. Don't forget Instagram, Instagram Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter YouTube, YouTube, iTunes. Follow us uh, if you don't follow us on a regular basis. You can follow us as well. Um, well, it'll be shown on Facebook and um, on everything Twitter. we post that involves us ourselves. We always make sure we include ourselves, tag ourselves, especially photos and stuff, um, so you can just find them right away. Um, so feel free to message us, tweet us, Facebook us, Instagram us, email us, um, anything, any way you want to get in contact with us. All Help right, us I, th- out. I think they got the hint. Um, this is this week's show. Um, you all enjoy. Hope you enjoy and talk to you guys next week. Keep listening. Thanks, Thanks. guys.